Hi, it's me. So yeah, not gonna beat around the bush. The audio from this video is pretty scuffed. Um, we didn't have our lav mics when we started filming this because I hadn't ordered them yet. And they came in a couple days afterwards. And what do you know if we'd actually had good audio quality mics with windscreen devices, um, maybe the audio would have turned out better. Who knows? What do you know? I don't know. I'm learning this as I go. I'm a farmer. I had never thought about making videos, but here we are. So anyways, I now have a fancy new set of DJI Mic 2s with the windscreens on them so that we should start getting some better audio quality when we go out and film in the extremely windy Northern Valley of California. Almost, you know, like Northwind Aerial Imaging should know about the north wind don't know so yeah i apologize for the audio issues i'm gonna try and scrub it as best i can but no promises i trust me though the video content is going to be worth it stick around tactical tim will probably show up a couple more times throughout this video to help explain and give some crucial uh, context to some of the stuff going on in the video but uh otherwise enjoy the show let's roll out all right everyone we know what's coming Skynet, FPV kamikaze drones, we have popper drones, we have spotter drones, we have tank drones. So how do you hide from them? How do you defeat them? What's the best camouflage? Today, on Northwind Aerial Imaging, we're gonna answer that question. How do you hide killer drones? We are going to be doing our first camouflage tests out here in a very cold, dried up rice field. This rice has all been harvested and has been dissed up and is food for geese and ducks right now, but it's a huge place for hunters to come and have recreation. So from the actual Swiss resident perspective, is imagine a scenario where a duck hunter has gone out and has not come back. Say they had a heart attack, they got lost, they got stuck in the mud. This mud out here is practically cake to walk through. It is it, cake batter, I mean. It sticks to your boots and will not come off. So imagine someone was out here doing some duck and goose hunting. They can't come back. The roads are flooded. The family can't get to them. You have a general idea of where they are hunting. For instance, this field out here, first check, but it goes for another couple checks. This field is 100 acres. So you have 100 acres that you need to check. Make sure this individual is out here. Best way to do it, gonna be with the drone. Especially on a cold day like today, thermal camera's gonna shine. But I'm not gonna start off with the we're going to start off with the wide view, zoom view, basically normal view of how you're going to see through the screen and see if we can find them that way. And then we'll switch over to the infrared if we can't find them that way. From a tactical perspective, seeing how well your camouflage can defeat a drone that does not have infrared or does have infrared, seeing how well your camouflage stands up with just a normal wide view. It's going to be some pretty good information. So we have a couple different camouflages we're going to try. We have some ABU, some ACU, some multicam, some Kuyu, I think it's called. I'll put it up here. And um, just some uh, woodland camouflage as well. So since I'm going to be flying, I'm going to hand the GoPro off to my buddy Travis. And I'm going to make him walk through the field. I'm going to make him get all muddy. But he agreed to it. Say hi, Travis. How's it going? If we're gonna be, well, if you're gonna be laying down, yeah. I don't know how much we need, well, you have the pants. I was thinking mostly if you're like hunkered down. Well, yeah, if I'm hunkered down, I don't even need to change pants. Yeah. In all honesty. Well, that, that's why I was thinking. My whole lower half is gonna be completely, if you can see my pants. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> so that's the problem. And then my pack, I just have on me in case, because I can be out there and switch to the other jacket. I was gonna say, yeah, and, the, and the, that's the same Kuyu camouflage. Yeah, and I'll just put it off to the side and shove it underneath. Perfect, no, I think that will work great. Okay, let's get the uh, let's get the drone figured out. Perfect. All right, so for today we're going to be using the DJI Matrix 30T. It is rated for up to 33 mile per hour winds. I don't think we're quite to that yet. And it also has, as mentioned before, the IP55 rating, so it can fly in the rain just as fine. I sure hope I got the numbers right. <laughs> Tactical Tim here with a tactical tip about IP ratings. Electronics all have an ingress protection rating that rates how protected the device is against both dust and water. The DJI M30T is rated against both dust and jets of water, making it to the ideal drone for search and rescue operations. Alright, go hide. Sweet.
Okay. Go ahead. All right, head that way. For the first test, we wanted to see how well the camouflage would work when hiding in tules along one of the ridges that divide the checks of the rice field. In this first test, Travis is wearing the Kiwi Valo camouflage, which we thought would blend in best with the tules. He is indeed in this entire clip right here. I'm not going to tell you where, but I want you to see if you can find him. This proves just how well his camouflage works when embedded down into the tules, and kind of shows just how hard it is to spot someone from the air when using a wide view when they are, of course, not trying to be found. In the interest of time, I won't include all the footage of me flying to the opposite end of the field, failing to find Travis. I flew all the way down to the opposite end of the field and checked a couple spots that I thought might be him, which ended up just being discolorations in the ground. Soon enough, he started to lose confidence in my abilities. So are you grid search it, or do you just fly in the levees? I ensured him that I was indeed just searching the levees where I was pretty sure he was. I started to wonder if maybe he'd gone a little bit further past the levee than I had expected, but after some radio traffic back and forth, he ensured me that no, he was indeed in the first levee. So eventually I gave up and turned on the thermal to try and spot him that way. I immediately picked up on a heat signature on the opposite side of the check, which I thought was him pulling a fast one on me, and it ended up just being doves. While Travis considered taking a nap in the Thule's, I decided to fly back the other way using the infrared, and what do you know, I found him easily. Found you. That crew is good camouflage. Only way I was able to find you is with the thermal. I can see your hands right there. <laughs> okay, what do you want to run next? I brought my green stuff, I'll throw my green jacket on and uh, move a little bit. Before switching to his more green colored Verde camouflage, we decided to have him stand up to get a good baseline of how well the Valo camouflage worked when standing up. Even when not covered by Thule's, the Valo camouflage blends in quite well. The only part I was able to really see from him was his brown pants. The Valo blends in quite well, even against the backdrop of the Thule's and the freshly dissed rice ground. One thing we noted, however, was that the Valo camouflage provided absolutely no protection against the thermal. He glowed like a beacon while laying down as well as standing up. I flew the drone back to land it while he switched into his Verdi camouflage, also from QU. While Travis put on his new camouflage and walked to a better spot, I brought the drone back and landed it so that way I would not see exactly where he went to. Once he was settled into his new position, he let me know over the radio and I launched back in the air to come try and find him again. Okay, I'm in a new spot. I don't feel like I'm hidden quite as well, but we'll see what happens. Similar to the first test, I had no luck finding him on the wide view camera. This time, however, I'm going to overlay the thermal camera so you can see that I flew exactly over his position and had no idea where he was at all. Since I had no idea where he was, I flew all the way down to the opposite end of the field, checking with wide and zoom, but couldn't find him at all. And that's when we started having some radio technical difficulties. You copy? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Your calm sucks. Eventually we just called each other on the cell phone so that way I could ensure him that I was indeed still looking for him and just hadn't found him yet. <laughs> I was like, there's no way this doesn't work. I'm literally 
I'm within within an eighth of a mile of you. Okay, I was I was calling for you a couple times, being like, "Oh, can you hear me? Are you ready to go yet?" And then I was like, "Okay." Just when I was starting to get a little bit worried was when you texted me. Well, I found you, but this time I definitely found you with infrared. I'll sit up and you can get a quick video of this camouflage. Travis emerged from his hidey hole, but once again, he had defeated the wide and view cameras and was only visible on the infrared spectrum. Once he stood up, it became immediately apparent where his position was. The green does not blend in with the backdrops of browns and yellows at all. However, this camouflage would still suffice easily if you're obscuring yourself. To no surprise, it provided zero protection against the thermal due to it being made of the same exact material. After the second test, it was time to swap out the batteries because they'd been getting pretty well used up from fighting the wind the entire time. So I came back, landed, and uh, we reconvened. After failing to find him hiding in the two leaves without using the thermal on both tests, we decided to try to beat the thermal. So yeah, so that's this is, this is the theory that you can cover yourself with this and pretty much hide from thermal. I do want to try that. And where did you order this from? Just the Amazon. Gotcha. All right, Amazon. Let's see if your camouflage can defeat thermal. So I'm yeah. going to be interested to see if it actually does. Yeah. So I'm just gonna walk to the corner here. So I'm actually going to use it. No. No. <laughs> rubbed enough mud on you it would, you would start to disappear i don't know about like the mud portion because it heats up so quick and one of the first videos i did we uh were able to see someone stood in the mud while they were looking at, our, at the victim they stood there and like were making sure she was okay and when they stepped off the mud after sitting there for like 30 seconds it um Oh, the, the mud was on, and it was like through his boots, like it was completely different on thermal. I wonder if they just tell people that. To... I'm gonna walk out there with you this time, so that way I'll be miserable as well. We d and we did that, so we did the camouflage that didn't match, we did the camouflage that did match, and both of them defeated the wide, defeated the oh, camera. Yeah. They did not defeat the infrared. So now, I would say we are going to try your Amazon poncho <laughs> versus my slightly more expensive Amazon poncho <laughs> and see which one works. All right, next test. It's gonna be our tactical ponchos. I can even get my, my poncho is from Amazon. I can't remember the name of it. I'll look it up and put it right here. Travis's is also from Amazon. Yeah, We're I'll, gonna I'll link. We'll see in the link. <laughs> we'll see whose is better. Saturday afternoon. <laughs> the ponchos are not practical in 30 mile an hour winds. No, they are not. They are not at all. The the hood that I have on mine is a little small, so I look like a pinhead. Like when I ordered it, I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna look like modern day Aragorn, and instead I get Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Just far enough off the road. Poncho blowing majestically in the wind. I'm just wondering what the duck hunters on the other road over are like. Oh, there's some guys hunting out there. No, they're not. They're just, they're just walking around. That's the biggest goose I've ever seen flying around over there. What's it doing? For the second portion of the test, we wanted to try out our ponchos, or woobies, as Travis called them. The object of this test was really to see if anything we could do, anything we could wear, could beat the infrared camera. The ponchos are made of a synthetic nylon material that doesn't absorb heat from our bodies as well, and also has a cushion area of air between our bodies and the material itself. Right off the bat, we got some pretty interesting results. The ponchos obscured our heat from the infrared camera pretty well. The only thing that really showed up heat-wise was our exposed legs and hands and the controller I was using to fly the drone. From certain angles, we seemed to blend into the thermal signature in the background quite well. 
Since we blended in fairly well on Black Hot, I decided to cycle through the other color settings on the infrared camera to see if we showed up on any of the others. I feel like the results kind of speak for themselves, which is why I recommend to my other pilots when you're out flying around looking for someone in infrared to sometimes cycle through to different color settings to see if something else stands out. Even without the thermal, you can see that our ponchos blend in fairly well to the background behind it. And to give you a good idea of just how sensitive the thermal camera is, you can barely clearly see the GoPro next to my right foot because it wouldn't stop falling over into the mud. So, also, I mean, going back to what you were talking about, the using this as a tent yeah. to block your heat, yeah. I would absolutely do that because it, uh, if you were, if it was, you know, two feet off your Oh, absolutely, body. because even on us, like, it, it defeated, stop that, it defeated the infrared better than anything it really has so far. But you'll, you'll see it, like, especially when we go and review it and go look at how it looked. Um, also, you're, you're close, excuse me, you're close to the ground. If yes. you were to get way the f*** up there, on a non-windy day, oh, you yeah. could, you know, fly at, what, 200 feet? Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it probably looked like the tiniest little Yep, that's that's honestly for like the whole drone search and rescue aspect is like I'm looking for those tiny little pinpricks and coming down and investigating them. And then you go back up. But with this, from two like with this, what we were doing, if it wasn't so windy, I want to come and try. I want to try and try this with like up in the mountains. Yeah, I think it would be a great idea. And it's like try it. Be cold, really cold. Cold and but try it to so like try it with the a couple different ponchos and try like that tent idea because I think that would be huge and get somewhere where it's not so windy because I think from 200 feet up we could really start to defeat these even by just wearing ponchos. Oh, okay. Defeat the infrared, I mean, because yep. it was. I got up to about 150 and was really starting to get like the red warnings for wind. Travis looking out here, look like he's getting ready to go to Vietnam or something. Multicam, <laughs> woodland, and Kuyu camouflage. We don't know what he's hiding from, but they ain't gonna find him. Oh no, this is sitting funky. I think I just have a God damn it, GoPro. <laughs> that sounds like a problem for future Tim. Future Tim has a lot of problems, but I'm not gonna worry about that. No right does. So now what I want to do is basically to set up this stuff in diff kind of different areas. So I want to do it like on the stuff that hasn't been dissed first. And then we'll move it to the stuff that has been disc, because that's a little more broken up. And then event, then we'll move stuff to the coolies, maybe the grass, and we'll call that good. Okay. I can't hear you, it's too windy. Congratulations, you've been promoted to cameraman. Okay. Again. So this is 100 feet, and switch over to zoom. So that is your Kuyu backpack. Okay, well, I may not have the straps and so forth True. that are. That is the crappy multicam plate carrier. That is the ACU. Looks like a blue blob. Yep. That is the ABU. It's very bright. It, it, it practically glows. <laughs> But I can't believe that's the Portland right now. It looks like a dirt. It looks but... like dirt. I can't believe it. So yeah, that is that is Walmart camo. Spend extra money on your camo. And then that is 
my multi key right there. Oh, e. my medical patch. <laughs> I might have to rethink that. That is the baseline. We'll go up. Oh, I was gonna say upgrade, but it all turns red. It turned red at 150 feet. So we're gonna be safe and not crash the very expensive tiny aircraft again. Again, it was one time. All right, last test. We're gonna take all this. I'm gonna shove it in some weeds over here to try and simulate hiding it just the bare minimum. We're gonna call that good for today. I feel like we've advanced the advanced science by leaps and bounds today. So I'm putting it, I'm putting it in the brush and just kind of like covering it just a little bit. Yeah, somehow this proved to be the best camouflage. It's got spider webs on it. This proved to be the best camouflage we had. Let's see how it works in the brush. That's the first thing I saw was the debut. Why did they issue this? They I don't know. They're, they're like, your job's too easy. You need to yeah. stand out. I can see some camouflage immediately, and I'm bummed. I'm pretty sure it's multi cam. Is it? Pretty sure. That, yep. First thing I see, my multi cam. I don't know if I need stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> So yeah, because I was wearing that. Oh wait, that's right. You were wearing that too. That that's the that's woodland camo vest. Yeah. So yeah, so our heat is still on that after not wearing it and throwing it in the that, like 20 minutes. That's that's crazy. The woodland camo fits in pretty well, but it's still for why? No, for zoom. Yes. I want to try and find the ACU and AP stuff. I know it's out. Oh, you lost it. Oh, there's. What's that? That is. That's the the ACU okay. camouflage. I'm trying to find the ABU. And see, this is what I was wondering about how the ABU would fare. See, that's the that's the good thing about having a small brain is I forgot. Well, that's beneficial to the video, right? There's. Nope, that's the ACU again. I'm an idiot. So there's the orange. There's the okay. rescue orange. Well, there's your back. Oh, geez, your backpack is on thermal. The backpack shows up, but only because it's a structure. I think okay. I think if you were, and by structure, I mean like it, it shows it up like that. If, yeah, so like if you shoved it in like that hole right there, no, I think it would be good. I, didn't, I just saw the Walmart camouflage out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, <laughs> hey, what's that? That's right. I, I totally forgot. I totally forgot I even hit the Walmart camouflage. <laughs> Again, this video is not sponsored by QU. Could be, it could but oh, there's the ABU. Spent all that time looking around for it. It's way over. Yeah. So the ABU actually blends in fairly well. See, it's so good. I've lost it again. Oh yes, there's that. Wow. See, I go back to wide, no. and it disappears. Yeah. Yep. And it's just laying. In. Yeah. On a wide view, I can't see that all the rain grains. I can't see the Walmart camouflage in the wide view either. Every, see everything, everything is still warm. That is surprising. Everything we carried out here, it still has that much residual heat. That is interesting, especially that plate, those plate carriers are over here. Yeah. It's surprising how much heat they retain. I, I, I would have bet you probably 20 bucks that the heat signatures would have been gone by now. My plate carrier, the multi-cam plate carrier, has been sitting in my house, but the woodland plate carrier has been sitting in the garage. I think, I'm trying to think, like, would the residual heat from those plates from sitting in the house have that much? No, it's, it's it'd have to be from wearing them. 
I would think, wear them very long. long. That's a test for another video. Just simply armor. Yeah, yeah, and I have mine too, we can test. We wore those out here and laid them down, bullshitted, uh -huh. came out here, put them down, and then moved them. They should not have that much heat on them. That is surprising. Um, where's my backpack? Don't I, forget that. That's one thing I'm terrified to do. Everybody's always tells me when you go hunting, you go to stock an animal, don't, don't pull your backpack down. No. You'll never find it again. At this point, we decided we'd run enough tests and wanted to head back to the house to start analyzing all of the footage we've gotten. I feel it's always important to keep your drone recording whenever you're out doing training or missions. So let's hear from Tactical Tim why that's so important. Welcome back to Tactical Tim's Tactical Tips. I'm Tim, and here's your tactical tips. When conducting search operations with a drone, it is ideal to have a team assisting the pilot. The arguably most important assistant you can have is a squinter or monitor. This is someone who is watching a live drone feed on a larger screen, such as computer or widescreen TV. Having a second set of eyes on the screen, especially eyes not focused on also flying a tiny aircraft on a tiny screen, is a huge factor in ensuring a successful drone SAR operation. There are several ways of sharing the live drone camera feed, such as DJI Flight Hub 2, a loft air control, a private YouTube live stream, screen sharing, Chromecast, and or simply plugging an HDMI cable into your controller. Team setups will all be different as they depend on budget, location, internet service, and the make and model of both the drone and controller. Regardless of whether you're able to broadcast your live feed on an incident or not, it is important to try to record as much of your flight as possible for after action review. You'll never know what potential clues or evidence you may have missed if you weren't filming. The rest of this video will be Travis and I going over all the drone footage, analyzing it together to demonstrate the importance of post-mission footage review. So yeah, because like, I'm pretty sure that's your hand right there. Yeah, it should be. Because that should be, is that, go back in, that's the camera, that's the little red part of the camera, God, right above my hand. Your eyes are better than mine. I wonder that if... should be, watch, we're probably, as long as it's the same. So, there's the end of the triangular part. Oh, you're right. Of, okay, so. so... You go up midsection. Yeah, that should be, yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, well, like I said, like that right there, I'm pretty sure is your hand, but I mean, yeah. that is amazing. Like, yeah, even on this pretty good resolution, there is, I would never find a human in that. Especially, but, uh, especially I'm not attempting to be perfectly. No. If I dug in and just piled unreal. Yeah, like once I found on, you and like started looking in on the zoom, which we can find right here. Yeah. Oh yeah, now I'm like, Yep. that is insane. <laughs> and that was when I was wearing... This was this was the first The part. first one, yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is your, oh yeah. geez. This is the the first camouflage, but like, yeah, so like wide, no, zoom, only because I knew what it looked like. If I wanted to find you at this, it would be, and all I have to do is pull this down. Oh, you can't yeah. see my legs. Yeah, yeah, if you were to like wrap your arm midway through that and pull it down over you mm -hmm. and like something like, or even like string something like, yeah, you would be that the only way I'm able to. Oh. Yeah, now like, my hat. Yeah, I was trying not to look to where my eyes. Yeah, that the only thing giving you away in this is the thermal and your hands. But like, even from like without, the, they're almost the same kind of color. Uh huh. Me standing, I stand up. Oh yeah, so you're standing up right there. Well, bitch, Tim. <laughs> What's Just, that? It's out of focus. That right there, though. That camouflage is if I was standing. Yeah, and you covered my face. And yeah. You're standing. Yeah. Man. As long as you weren't silhouetted or a skyline yourself. Excuse me. Yep. But even there, like, it's not super obvious. No, it is not. So like, yeah, if you just look at just the camouflage by itself, so like pause right there. Yeah. You go like that, you, you blend out your pants. Yep. And boom, you are hidden. 
Except like uh, the only reason I know you're there is because I'm straight up looking for you and knew where and you I, were. I, if if I did it right, yeah, my head was covered, my hands were in my pockets, and I had matching pants. I wonder if I could travel this slowly and move without you. You find if you know you're searching a field, yeah. and somebody's crawling. If if you if I could exit the field without I, you finding me, that would be something to definitely be interesting to do. And I think the way I would do it is if we wanted to do a video like that. Record it like only in wide. I would, well, I would record it in all three spectrums like this. I, I set this camera to record on every one of the cameras. So that's why the T is for thermal, y, W is for wide, zoom is for, Z is for zoom, and then S is for the screen. So like what this, what I'm seeing through the screen. Yeah. I would keep the, I would have the camera record on all of those, but only look through to wide and see if I could spot you. And then go back through later and see how many times I picked you up on the thermal, yeah. but never saw you. The only thing though is, is nobody's going to be searching for you. Because I'm thinking of, of this from a military, yeah, well, that's law what they, enforcement yeah, is... aspect, not from search and rescue aspect. Yeah, but uh, law enforcement doing this more often when they're searching the scanner a lot from like all around the country, and. There'll be a lot, like whenever there's like an active shooting or anything like that. Yeah. One of the first things I always hear more and more often is, we've got a drone in the air. They're, yeah. they're putting drones in the air more often. And Especially I mean, if you have a property where you have somebody that's trying to evade. Yeah. They, yeah. You mostly kind of barely camouflage and yourself defeated. Regular I never, camp. yeah, well, I never would have found you on a ground search like that unless yeah. we were actively like, walking you'd through. have to be yeah digging and, through yeah. yeah and if you were a if you were a you know someone on the run or something like that you actually wanted to do harm and you're hiding in those bushes you're, you're not going to go digging through the bushes so i ain't no i ain't going through digging through the bushes and if i am you're going to get the drop on me immediately if you have a evading person that is dangerous you're not going to have a bunch of guys walking through a field right because that, that's as bad as CQB, you're gonna get Going, shot. I can't remember what Facebook group it was, but I was talking about how useful drones are in law enforcement, and someone was arguing with me about saying, well, they just need to, you send in the dogs, why bother with the with the drones, why send in the dog? Because was, the dogs are just as valuable as humans in uh, that aspect. Agreed. Like, they're gonna get and shot. So I, and I tried to explain that to him. A guy who took off, he, he like ran from the cops off into a wooded area, and they were having a hard time finding him at night. And the guy was saying, just send in the, the guys with flashlights and send in the dogs and round them up. And I'm like, or he could send in a drone that has an infrared camera. Oh, we don't need it. I'm like, we can put something in the air that can't get shot. This drone and my other drone both have speaker attachments. So you get on there and be like, dude, we see you. Get on the ground. Yeah. Get on the ground. And instead of sending in a law enforcement officer or a dog and having them get ambushed, I'm going, this is a perfect scenario. And I don't know how many times I've watched videos that are for some reason controversial, right? Yeah. And a, they send in a dog after a suspect and the dog gets shot. Or stabbed or something yeah. like that. So here's here's an interesting one. So like this, this is all in thermal and I was flying along and I wanna see how early we can spot you. So like that that spot right there was one of the first ones I was like, wait a minute, maybe? But no, that, that one right there. So that's when I saw that cause I went, that's a lot, of, um, a lot darker and everything else around it. and. All of the heat, all of the more thermal stuff was on this side. There's not really much, as you can see, there's not many thermal signatures over on this side. Because so the ground is 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 worked up. There's, I don't understand why. So do you have a still of this? Yeah, so, so you're right. See how the ground is tilled? Yeah. But it is on this side too. So why would it be dark through there? I think it's, if I had to guess, it's probably because rain came from so this is the south right here so it's just so a temperature it is i think temperature it is temperature different so we have we have a small temperature contrast because this hit it so the rain water did Which it warm was it up wind blowing um Re we're getting really technical now yeah. reason i'm thinking is because this is this is north over here there's the road and so this is this is south over here but generally our rainstorms come in from the south so like that's but normally we see north winds generally or is that only in the summertime? You know, I guess we can watch the video and see which way the Re plants reason. Okay, so, okay, well, we can tell. So the wind is blowing from, from south, south from south to north so because everything's would, blowing that way. So, so I wonder so, if it's blocking it and it's physically warmer. Yeah, so the wind is going to blow in. The wind and rain blows in from this way, hits the tulies. So this over here stays a little bit warmer. You know, like you said, looking at this from a military and law enforcement perspective. Yeah, because I'm here, right? Actually, if you're not. I thought you were, but you're not. You're right there. 
Okay. Yeah, so if I were to just go on this edge, that's really dark though when you come up on it. But if I yeah. were to just tuck in here on the edge. Yeah, so that's looking at it from a tactical perspective. If it was nighttime and you're only looking at me through thermal, strictly, yeah. I, I wonder if you could hide that way. I, you'd have a lot better shot. Like if you, if you were to, I mean, just looking at it from this, if you were on the south side, you, I mean, you can see the temperature difference here. If you were over here, you're going to get seen over here. Like if you were to lay right there and were able to hide your thermal signature a little bit better than yep. like what you've got right there. Yeah. Like that, that is very, be very hard to pick up. It'd be a lot harder to pick up than where you were right there. Yeah. Especially yeah, like, if you were doing sweeps at night at, you know, 150, 200 feet, and you're just trying to see anything obvious, see somebody moving, you you probably would pass over it. I would. I'm just, I'm, I'm interested. I had not considered, because essentially now, now we figured out this black, all this, all this black hot over here, that's essentially the rain shadow of the two leaves right here. Yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, if you're trying to hide, sitting in the rain shadow, that's interesting. It's amazing how dark this is. Yeah. Because that, I it is thermal, so it's considerably warm. I, that's when I wish there was a temperature uh, there is. scale. I, I should have had it. I wish I'd, I wish I'd had it up, because I can draw a box on the screen and it'll have a red dot on the inside the box. Like however big you draw the box, it'll say here's the warmest and what the temperature is, and here's the coldest and what the temperature is. Okay. So that way I could have come over here and basically had the box around this, and we could have seen the temperature difference between the two leaves. And right there, that's something to keep in mind for the next next time we do something like this. So here, here's a question you, you might know the answer to. We run at what, 98.6 generally, yeah. Okay, if, but if you insulate yourself, is the airspace closest to you, but not inside your body warmer? But now you've got me thinking of a different idea for a video of how many layers of clothing would it take to defeat a thermal? No, I know, no, 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 oh, we're good. That'd be brutal. I know, we'll, 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 we'll find, we'll, we'll make someone else do that. we 30 jacket. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can get Slug. She's my unpaid assistant. I'll see if I can get Slug to come do that. Slug, get your clothes ready. Lay in the rain, 10 million jackets. <laughs> Just starfished out there. Yeah. But it's seriously, like, think, like, okay, so yeah, you got, you know, you've got your shirt. The shirt we've seen, like, boom, it gives off heat. Now what happens if you put a, a windbreaker over that, or like you know, it's like some wool, and then a windbreaker, and then another windbreaker, and see how many jackets to the point you, you can defeat thermal if you can. Well, um, obviously you know that the heavy synthetics that don't breathe, like the woobie, yes, does does shield you partially. I'm sure you would heat soak it at some point in time. Yeah. So yeah. So here's here's the woobie, and this is where I was like immediately like as we were flying out there i was Im like immediately going right. oh no we're doomed because there there's me right there <laughs> i immediately was that like blob. i was like yeah look at that look at that blob right there like if i laid down it'd be different so there's there's you but still like even on the wide i'm like no we yeah. are <laughs> we show up <laughs> oh that's where the gopro fell over so the, yeah, this is where I was going around, and I mean the color is right. It is the and like, shape is is wrong. The shape is wrong, but even as like if when you change angles, angles, because like now, well, for, you know, there's your stuff we're talking, but like now I'm like, okay, Can't really, I don't know, I'm there, and the color is just about right. I think it's got a little bit too much pale cream in it for too It's a little too bright, yeah. So then we come over on this angle. Oh god, I've lost this. Right here. God, the camouflage is too good. Where am I? You should be You're right there. Oh, I'm right there. Okay. So yours starts to work better. Yeah, mine starts to work better when you don't look at it from the front, but so does yours. I think yours would work good too. It just is a little too. It's the got shape too, is really weird. The shape, I think it's the the it's got a pinkish color to it. Yeah, almost. it's too cheap. It's too cheap. Yeah. I expected mine to work like crap. It's the shadows. If you play the shadows of the yep. tulies properly with so, rains, then it's it, you'd be okay. Yep. I wonder how many hours it would take of you scanning through wide angle to find some, if you so, ever could. If I was to do that, the way I would 
the way I would want to do that if I only had wide would be to use something like DJI Flight Hub to broadcast what the drone is seeing back to a widescreen TV and have someone who's a spotter watching what I'm seeing. And looking at shapes. Yeah, watching, watching this live feed on that and going, oh, and also... I realize wide angle so you can cover a lot, but also wide angle and possibly change physical angle of the drone yeah. and not just look overhead straight down. Yeah. Because looking straight down at things is really hard. Yep. Well, that's, yeah, like even looking at the, the straight down of this, I was like, like that's that's almost straight down and I you're only know you're there because I looked. Yeah. yeah, but like if you had... If you'd been sitting underneath that, I would not have found you. Whereas, like, I can barely find me in here. But you changed to a different angle, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, there we are right there. We're looking at more of a 45. Uh, the thermal I found to be very interesting. So this is as we're flying over, like we were both still sitting there with all of our stuff exposed. But you can see it's blocking yeah. it's a blocking lot more than board. I thought. So I want to get to the... Yeah, the controller's nice warm hands. At some point, that's when I was like, wait a minute, this might actually work. And I started hiding it underneath there. And this is where I really liked the idea of using the tent. And just physically laying under it and taking footage from the top. Yeah. Yeah. You would have so, to make sure, and you know what you could do? You get an ice chest, oh, yeah. dunk the whoopee, and then string it out and spray it all down real cold. The only problem with that, though, is sometimes if cold, it's cold enough, freezing will show up more than this. Because, yeah, if we had, like, something that was frozen out here, that would actually be something interesting to see. Something will frozen it be, Will cold. it be, like, illuminated? It, it should be very white. Because it would be, like, a glowing white stuff compared okay. to this. So here's an interesting still. So that's what I was talking about. Like, there's your legs sticking out right there and your hands. Yeah. This is where I pulled it all over myself and was even obscuring the... Um, controller yeah, so I was I trying to hide my all feet the in I started to tuck my feet in yeah and this is when I was trying to yell to you and go uh, this is actually really interesting because if you were to cover yourself properly even like this and get in a patch you knew was warmer yeah you might be able to hide from it for a, a few minutes I think so too because like you look at that color and this color that's the same temperature yep and I think yeah if you were to hide under that especially if you were to have it off the top of you so it's not getting your body heat it's not getting your 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 excellent bad guys are carrying around like a tent tent poles and they're just running under tent poles and they just stake it down and pause it would you know it's worth they're, a shot they have a ground blind and they're running in the middle of the night with the ground blind over the top of them. yeah so here's here's a, a photo still and this is um, i actually want to use I'm gonna use these photos for like training in my group. Cause like, I want to send this to them and be like, there are two people hiding in this photo. Where are they? Mm -hmm. Then send this one. Can you find the two people now? So it's a, it's not just a, yeah, don't rely on thermal. Thermal is a good tool, but also, you know, if, if you're, if there's zoom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, you know, we could be uh, piles of garbage. We, you know? we, well, have, you, have you seen the ghillie suit for, uh, it was like the Seattle ghillie suit. No. Oh, yes. Where it's, it's, fucking it's, it's, hard, <laughs> it's cardboard and like a Bud Light can for the for the suppressor and whatnot. Oh, I'm like, I've got to build me one of those. I'll make sure and edit that into the video. So like, yeah, like if if you're looking at this photo and you didn't know what you're looking at, you'd be like, yeah, if I square up to it. The problem is we already know. The problem is we of, already know. But, but if I, I just start scanning left to right, yeah, if you were sitting here and start going like, okay, you would probably happen on that and be like, well, that looks a little bit different, but I think it's also, this is where I'm interested, I want to send it to a group, I feel like it's also a little bit of selection bias on yours and mine part of the- Because we know exactly what we are. Right. Yeah, we've yeah. been staring at this for the last half an hour. The camouflage test. I cannot believe it. The, it takes me a second to figure out what a woodland jacket is. So we have my search and rescue helmet. Oh. <laughs> Jacket. It is. I'm telling you. <laughs> like, what? Re reject, reject modernity. A return to tradition. It's, but if it was new and like very green, it's yeah. definitely well worn. Yeah. But or, dude, we, you go all the way out and you're like, it looks like a blob. It does. Like I'm sitting here. I'm immediately drawn to the, you know, the orange, which is that's why we wear orange or red in search rescues for that. Yeah. And the and the blues in your. Yep. That's kind of going back to like the uh, your your wooby. 
had that too much of a cream color, so it stood out. Getting it. Okay, okay. you know, look at your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, suddenly glad we finished filming when we did, because this would have been... Being out there at this would not would have been, been, would have, We probably would have been like, okay. I, I feel like we probably would not have done this test. No, <laughs> we're, doing like this going home. we're going home. Um, so yeah, so orange, good to know. Multicam, I feel like... It's not bad. It's not bad, but I'm bummed. It, it's... I get it's it's you know not to be, but in the middle of the of the sand, of the desert where it's yeah. just really bright, I bet you it would disappear. I think this will I think this will really shine when we do like some mountain tests and everything too. Because like I want to repeat this test up in the mountains and like do more of like okay no now we're actually you know when we have time do it. Yeah, your job is to almost like a capture the flag, get from point A to point B, Walmart camo, or. I'm, I'm not sure if it, I think it's Walmart, but it doesn't matter. Uh, no, way too much pink in that. That is yeah. bright. Kuyu, very good. good. It's also multicam. That is, this is the ACU, so the Army Combat Uniform. So that's jacket and helmet. And then the ABU, Airman Battle Uniform. And I am, I am becoming a firm believer in Kuyu, because I'm looking at this like the only thing that comes close to Kuyu is, is the, that the old faded <laughs> Vietnam vest? But this right here, I'm like for modern stuff. I'm I should have thrown my jacket out there. Probably it was a nice jacket. I'm going, but it, even just the backpack. The only reason I can really pick up on the backpack is the shape. I can see, like you see the strap right there, and then the shadow caused by the strap. But for the most part, that blends in quite well right there. Let's see. That's what it all looks like on thermal. So much heat. I can't, I'm still... In, in, in inanimate objects that we carried for limited amounts of time. I, so much, it blows my mind. Because again, we talked about, all of this was sitting outside in my Jeep for the hour and a half we were doing this. Yep. This was, these, all of this was not in the truck at all. Unless there's something we don't know about the thermal. I wonder if it modifies contrast differences in temperatures depending on what it sees. It does, because like it's 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 definitely is based on like a contrast thing. Because uh, you know, I, if the scale was just always the same, I feel like if you move between summer and winter, it would become even more. Pro does that make sense? Yeah. No. So like, in, that's the, that's why thermals work so good in the winter time is because there's such that huge contrast between anything that has warmth to it. And anything that has, you know, anything's the ambient temperature. And the ambient temperature being so cold that anything that's warm is going to glow like a beacon. Whereas in summertime, that's where, like, we've had some problems is... Everything's searching. very dark. Everything's, well, not just that. Everything is very... White hot and black hot I don't even use in the summertime. Because you're, it's so, everything's the same color. So that's when I generally switch to, like, a different color scheme for looking through the infrared, like, red hot or hot iron where it's more like the kind of predator looking vision. Yep. And because that has a full rainbow of, of spectrum of colors, so I'm able to pick out differences and whatnot. Right, I was doing this when we were looking at the whoopies and I was trying to see what the hell they looked like in different colors. Oh, so, so I could see where my foot, so yeah, if you contrasted it differently. Yep, so that's, yeah. So it's, I just find it like when everything's cold, I find black hot easier to see. So yeah, so this is black hot right now. That's white hot. Actually, no, that is. That's the. Your... That was actually tint first, I think. So let me see. The tint. So yeah. So you see how you're glowing red. So this is called this. This screen is called tint. Okay. So it's like anything that's like distinctly hot, it puts a red, uh, red above it. So like that right there is the GoPro that I'm pretty sure is falling over on the ground again. And <laughs> this is this is your hat, your foot. So that's why like those are the two big sources of heat right there. And then it's it, the tint stays on kind of white hot. Yeah, in this, if you were to lay down in this and actually have the will be off of your skin. Yeah, I like wonder, that right there. I, I bet. wonder if yeah, it would you would just pass over it. We almost need to build there. That's white hot. So yeah, so I went I went black hot tint. This is just solid white hot. I think this is red iron um, view. I'm pretty sure this is hot iron. This would be easier in some scenarios. This is what I use for summer. 
because okay. it'll go through all these different colors and whatnot. So like if I'm looking for something that's, if I'm using infrared in summer, generally only at night. Particularly hot. Precisely. I'm looking for, I'm looking for a hot body, <laughs> looking for a hot body <laughs> in a hot. <laughs> if you had a pause, that would have skated right. I know. I know. <laughs> If you're looking for, <laughs> if you're looking for body heat in the middle of the summer and everything else is warm in the area, then like I'm looking for very minute differences. So it's like it's this this helps because it has a very wide range of spectrums. And then that is Arctic, I believe. That seems like it's almost it's too bright because you start going. Yeah, you could get lost in the reds and precisely. stuff. Precisely. So like this is more for a. I don't know if it's for when everything's completely frozen over. I need to go yeah. do some of this in like the snow and whatnot and see it. Or if you had a super wide angle in thermal and you just wanted to see something, obviously somebody walking up a mountainside, you'd be like, okay. Precisely. Yeah. But even then, sometimes like that black hot works because you put it on and then you know, okay, I'm only looking for one coloration. So I haven't found like a very good use for this, but I want to try, that's why I want to go fly it in the snow and see if maybe that's where it works best. But like you said, it's easy to get lost in the colors because you and I right there could very easily, if we were over here, it'd be, it'd be impossible. Yeah. Oh God, I have so much footage to go through. A lot of footage. So yeah, there's our first video on how different camouflages work against drones. Hoping to turn this into quite the series. Uh, hoping to have Travis back soon. Hoping to have a couple other guests on the channel as we experiment more with the best ways to hide from drones and find people with drones. So thank you so much for watching. I know this is a very long video to get through, but to be honest, this is the sort of content that I am trying to find to help me get better at search and rescue. So I'm gonna put out the sort of stuff that I wanna watch. If there's any ideas you have for us, if there's anything we could have done better, I know we forgot a couple things, uh, forgot a couple steps, uh, forgot a couple tests, um, if there's anything we could do better next time, go ahead and leave us a comment and uh, we will take that advice to heart and hopefully even keep improving this series. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like, consider subscribing. This was quite the endeavor to put out. We had hours of footage to go through and overlay on top of each other. So I'm hoping to keep putting out this sort of thing for you guys and your support will keep me motivated to do it. So thank you again. See you on the next one.